Sometimes you just need to take the slips out and bowl defensively. And you also need to be careful with your computer's defense as well. If you need a VPN, go Nord. NordVPN.com forward slash Kimber to get a two year contract with a discount plus four extra months and gifts in some markets. It's completely risk free with Nord's 30 day money back guarantee. The link is in the show notes. So put in some dot balls and turn them into maidens via NordVPN.com forward slash Kimber. Hello and welcome everybody to episode 14 of the Crick Picks podcast. I'm Behram Kazi, you can find at Def Mango on Twitter. With me, of course, is Estelle Vasudevan, who you can find at Estelle underscore Vasudevan. And of course, Jared Kimber, as always, you can find at a Jared Kimber. And in Crick Picks, if you haven't watched this podcast before, we take one generic cricket category and then we draft or pick our top fives within that category. And it's a snake style draft. So... First pick goes sixth and seventh. One, two, three, four, three, two. Uh, sorry, what am I even doing? I forgot my counting. Uh, one, two, three, three, two, one. <laughs> and uh, the topic for today is most iconic sledges. So, Jared, you're number one pick. Take it away. All right. This is, we're not talking about a player who did one sledge that's famous, are we? Mm. Yeah. We are talking about people who are generally chatting to the opposition. Is that fair? Hmm? Okay. I think so. Fine. Just setting that down, Steve Hall. Hmm. I, I, I had him in my list. He was in my because, top five, actually. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if he's the biggest sledger ever, and I think there are probably bigger sledges within Australian cricket than Steve Hall, but he kind of made sledging famous, right? Like, he takes it from something that cricketers know about um, through to something that everyone else um, talks about. And he did that thing, like what... Was it Was it the Republican think tank that changed um, uh, uh, global warming to the... the no, was it the the, the, the uh, climate crisis to global mm. warming or whichever change they made? And he kind of tried to do the same thing with sledging. Oh, it's not sledging, it's <laughs> mental disintegration. It's like, okay, <laughs> fine. Uh, so, so yeah, I think it's him. Also, I, I've actually got another player who's quite interesting uh, that I don't think is as well known for sledging for later. But I probably give extra points if you're a batter who sledges mm. because that is that's kind of next level, right? Like... You know, and, and in Steve Ward's case, I kind of feel like he almost had to get into a fight with someone in order to be a better player. So yeah, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Steve Waugh. There's that story with Rahul Dravid and Steve Waugh, isn't it? Um, in which Dravid took him for lunch or dinner or one of those things. And then in the Kolkata test, Steve Waugh was the one who was sledging Dravid and he came up on top. And yeah, there, there's a story there, definitely an anecdote that I don't remember as well. <laughs> no, I mean, I think just every story with Steve Waugh is that like, you know, I mean, one of the most famous sledges he ever did was with Jamie Siddons, who, you know, Estelle will remember. Oh no, did Jamie Siddons coach Sri Lanka as well? Or was he on the staff? No, he did ba Bangladesh, didn't Bangladesh, he? Bangladesh, yeah. 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 Um, oh, Jamie Siddons is... Um, is, is sledging um, uh, Steve Waugh because he's taking too long to get ready uh, at, in a Shield game. And he goes, settle down, mate. This isn't a test match. And Steve Waugh goes, I know, because you're here, right? Like, <laughs> you know, just unnet, you know, all that sort of stuff. But I think it's, me, it's less to do with the individual sledging. I'm sure there are bigger, certainly Australian sledges than Steve Waugh, but I don't think there's anyone else who's kind of made it as famous or as uh, part of, uh, you know, a general conversation as Steve Waugh did. Yeah, uh, there's obviously the famous uh, sledge to Herschel Gibbs as well, which wasn't actually you've dropped the World Cup, but that's what we know it now as. And, and Steve, what does it do? But again, <laughs> you're talking about another time when he was batting. Like most of them yeah. are batting related, right? Like the ones with Kurtley Ambrose yeah. as well, batting mm. related. Like it's it's bizarre um, because that wasn't what, you know, so batters used to be quite, not quiet, but they would be it, they would be friendly banter. Where Steve Waugh mm. just like pretended he was about to bowl 90 miles an hour but was holding it back. It's, <laughs> it's such a weird way of doing it. Yeah, definitely someone who, uh, well, flew that sledging flag for Australia for many, many years. And uh, my number one pick is, uh, well, someone from the same team, but not good mates with Steve Waugh, not at all. And uh, he sadly passed on now. But I do think the king of sledging is Shane Keith Warren. I mean, no one okay. did it as much as Warney. We know the Cullinan story. We know what he did to Andrew Strauss. I mean, if you've watched the Shane Warne documentary, Strauss narrates that entire incident um, in that documentary and how Warney literally told him, 
what he'd bowl and then got him out exactly like that, something of the sort. And he was something who not only was constantly in your ear, he'd want to pick up a fight. That would, you know, fire him mm. up. Shane Warne did his, uh, or well, bowled his best whenever he was kind of fired up as uh, a direct consequence of his own sledging. So it was kind of a Michael Jordan-esque in that way. And I don't think there was any batter or any team that he ever spared. He was just always at you. And he had that, you know, aggression of a fast bowler being a wrist spinner, which I think mm. uh, is quite unique. Yeah, no, I know. He's definitely, I think he's definitely different to everyone else. You know about the Cullinan story, don't you? Like what he did with Cullinan. Yeah. Where yeah. he, I see, I think that's one of the few times that Shane Warne actually sledged well. <laughs> I think more often it was kind of stu everything he said was kind of stupid, right? But that the Cullen story is next level. Like of instead of just going, oh, you went to a psychologist because you couldn't play me. It's like you know what color was the couch and how much did the se how long did the sessions go for and you know how much did you have to pay for it? Or like that's that is actually quite good because there's a confusion there of Cullen going, what the hell is he talking about for a moment, right? Before he suddenly realizes what, what Warren is on about, you know, and, and most of the most famous sledges of all time are really stupid. It's mostly about the player's weights, the player's wife mm. or the player's sexuality, right? Like that is like 98% of sledges. So to, mm. to, to flip that a little bit um, in that sort of way. And also because Warren was the person who sent him to the couch, right? So it's, it's a perfect way of, of getting involved. So yeah, I think that's, I, I think he's he's quite fine. I, I just don't know if I have him ahead of Steve Waugh because of the whole the 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 um the environment of sledging that Steve Waugh allowed, which part of which was Vaughn. Yeah. And uh, I mean definitely someone who got into the batter's head. And yeah, I mean those are the two obvious ones, I suppose. Uh, you'd imagine those to be the first two picks in this podcast. <laughs> I, I had them as one and two. Yeah, I just yeah. did I I you know, it was a bit of a coin flip for me. All right, Estelle, two picks coming up for you. Yeah, I'm going to do a Bayram and pick a Sri Lankan at number three. I don't think it's unexpected <laughs> that I would go with Kumar Sangakara. Um, obviously, the, the, the most way famous one is The these expectations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sean Pollock. Um, poor guy, you know. But he, he was always the type of player who had something to say. And it's kind of expected from a wicketkeeper as well, isn't it? Like, just something to say to every batter that came out there. Um I seem to remember something to do with Joe Root as well. Um, the, they wanted to call him, like, I mean, they thought he looked like Ellen DeGeneres. And, you know, <laughs> but unfortunately, most what? of the Sri Lankan players didn't know who Ellen DeGeneres was. Um, I love Kumar going around with a phone. She going, Ellen, you know, the Ellen show. She had a sitcom. <laughs> In the nineties, <laughs> I hope I'm not. I, I'm not getting it wrong that it, it was Sangha, but it it did happen around his time. I think so. He was always someone who had had a had a few words to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, and after the two obvious picks, I think we have to kind of. I have to at least pick a few mm. who have kind of iconic moments. No, he he was on my list. It's one of my favorite yeah. sledges of all time. The Skippy, yeah. Well, what was it? 42 million supporters, the weight of all those expectations. It was the way he said it. It was just hilarious. And Sangha has a funny bone. I've seen a lot of these casual interviews of him and you can you can tell that he was the sort of guy who had, liked to have a bit of fun behind the stumps. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it, I don't think he's known as a sledger in all, like in all games, but I think you're right. He certainly mm. spoke to a lot of players mm. and he was probably trying to, in, in the same way that maybe someone who might come up on my list later is also not known necessarily as a sledger, but it's probably mm. because most players didn't quite understand what they were talking about in the first place. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think, uh, you know, Kumar's probably right there, but even if, you know, he is certainly one of the most famous players in the world when it comes to sledging, because, even if it is because of that one, uh, mm. one moment. And I, yeah, I've talked to Sean Pollock about it before. Sean Pollock, <laughs> sort of claims that he wasn't really, he didn't really hear it. He didn't realize it was going on. It was more something that became famous for us rather than for him. Yeah. And, it, you know, he still made runs as well. Although the game didn't go particularly well for Sh uh, for South Africa, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Rain played spoil sport once again, wasn't it? Yeah, it was <laughs> well, once again you don't the, know the Playing conditions <laughs> of the game, you know, you're probably going to be in the wrong spot. Yeah. Okay, my second pick um, is Virat Kohli. Another Ooh. guy who had a lot, who always has a lot to say. Mm. I especially like wanted to pick him in like the top top picks for me was because he sledged a stump. Um, I mean, <laughs> who does that, right? <laughs> who, 
who, who does oh that? Oh my god! Right? That, that was the first time. Um, and he's. I'm ta- he's I don't think he sledged a stump. I'm gonna. I'm gonna mm. argue that he actually sledged an entire commentary box. <laughs> yeah, but at a production stump, house, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah, he did. Oh, the funny story yeah. about Virat. So, every time he actually gets into these situations and sledges, somehow India manages to lose, or is it that just me? Oh, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, I know I know he certainly he got involved and you know Ed Cowan's talked about this before but he got involved with a comment with Ed Cowan about um his mother which really upset Ed Cowan and Ed Cowan's talked about a lot um since then um and I have talked to some players who say that you know Vera is quite um quite verbal on the field mm-hmm. so I think he's certainly a sledger I mean top fourth pick on the draft that's that's hmm. a that's a high spot and yeah. uh, incredible that Estelle has had two picks and not picked a single Australian because hmm. I did wonder how far we would go before Kumar would come up as the first non-Australian <laughs> and Estelle's just like no 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 I, I'm I'm going renegade again yeah it's good because I have no plans yeah, that, of going renegade that's uh, the theme in this of one how, so I'm happy goes, Estelle right? is taking over <laughs> you pick yeah. the well, ve- someone the always ruins advanced. every draft Vietnam picks the <laughs> Pakistanis. <laughs> Yeah, I, I picked the ones that light the world on fire. And uh, it's funny, the two Virat sledges, apart from the stump that I remember, uh, one of them is, what, Johnny Bairstow, right? And that ended pretty badly for him. But I'm sure, like, that's the, just the ones that we see on the TV. The sledging mm. all the time with Virat. He, he's that mm. sort of aggressive yep. bloke. Well, interesting picks. Uh, I am a touch disappointed that you've taken Sangha away because I honestly, like Jared, thought he would come after many others. I'm going to go with another obvious one, another Aussie. Uh, Mitchell Johnson is my next pick. Uh, someone who sledged to the point that uh, he sent cricketers to the shrink and ended careers. And uh, also someone who, well, you could say that it wasn't always pleasant. Mitch Johnson, Mitch Johnson had the appetite to say some really foul and vile things. But it, you know, enhanced his game. Much like Vaughn, he got fired up. And I'm pretty sure he upset a fair few batters into playing a rash shot. Because that's why Johnson and most fast bowlers do this in the first place. And it gets that adrenaline pumping. But after Warren and, of course, Steve War, I feel like it has to be Mitch Johnson. Maybe there are a few other names from the past. Of course, Jared is obviously going to go with one of those historic picks. <laughs> but, you know, in my time watching cricket, Johnson stands out like a, a sore thumb. <laughs> sore. There's, the, there's the classic <laughs> moment where, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but they used it to sell, I think it must have been... I can't remember which Ashes it was actually now. But it must have been the 10 11 Ashes, I think, thinking back on it. But they used Mitch Johnson sledging um, Jimmy Anderson to sell a DVD of that series. <laughs> and if I remember correctly, he, um, you know, he's having a go at him. And then, like, literally, as Jimmy Anderson's walking to the back of his mark, and then Jimmy Anderson comes in and clean bowls whoever's at the other end and then turns around. So, yeah, I think I think Mitch has certainly been on the wrong side of uh, quite a few mm. of those over the years. But it's um, uh, it's it's certainly a, um, <laughs> you know, I'm not sure. So I just think he was angry. I'm not sure he was necessarily like a sledger. <laughs> so the, the whole line between fast bowlers sledging mm. and fast bowlers just barking because they bark is mm. – I, it's a hard one to to get your head around if you think about it, right? Yeah. I mean, he had the look for it too with the handlebar mustache. And also, it's yeah. just you think of Mitch Johnson and you think of an angry bloke. He even sledges people mm. after retirement, the whole Warner incident that just happened. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> there are a few no, names, no, no. historical that, names that I that have over here f- that I know that you will think are bigger sledges. <laughs> yeah, the whole fear factor yeah. thing was part of what he thought at least was going to bring success, right? I suppose so. Yeah, I think it all played a part, didn't it? Mm. Um, okay, I'm going to... Oh, so many Australians. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go Graham Smith. Ooh. Because I don't think he gets enough credit for sledging. And I know it was massive. And there's also there's great moments of, like, of Graham Smith like laughing at teammates when they were also being idiots. Remember, his handling of Paul Harris always made me laugh because like Paul Harris would come up and say something really earnestly to Grant Smith and Paul Harris would turn away and walk away and Grant Smith would look at everyone and go, no, I'm not going to do that. What are you talking, why are you, are you saying this? But, you know, we know he got in Steve's Finn, Steve Finn's head completely. Whether he ruined Steve Finn as an international bowler or not, I don't know, but he certainly derailed that career quite massively. He got in the heads of a lot of um, English cricketers, tried to sledge as much back to the Australians as they were sledging to him. 
Um, but there is a particular moment, and I have to be a little bit careful with this, although I'm sure it's available online if you could work it out. But there was a test match in South Africa where a foreign player was on tour there and was, I don't know, cheating on a girlfriend or a wife or what, mm. whatever it may be. And this player was like yapping back at the South Africans and allegedly Graham <laughs> Smith walked up to, to the player right next to the stump mic and said, would you like me to say into the stump mic what you've been doing on this tour? <laughs> wow. And I thought that is a, that is a bold moment of, <laughs> of sledging there of like, there's some research involved, you know, there's a clap back. There's a, like, how does that player say anything for the rest of the tour at that point? Mm. Right. And like, uh, so yes. So there was some, there were some really, really um, good ones. And I, I just don't think Steve Smith is thought about um, as a sledger as much. Um, there's, I don't know if you guys have heard of the Australian comedian Jim Jeffries, who's really big in America and does a lot of stuff on gun rights and and everything. And he, um, he recently released a video about him and Graham Smith having an argument in a pub. Um, and, uh, and Graham Smith, even when he got him, he got Graham Smith onto the stage afterwards where they tried to make up, right. Graham Smith was literally still sledging him under his, um, breath while on stage. Um, I think that's commitment to the bit. So I'm going to go, um, Graham Smith as my, it's, uh, what's is that my second pick, isn't it? Yeah, that is. And it's interesting because yeah. I actually did not have him on this list. Uh, he did not feature and it's uh, also you call him Steve Smith. Uh, or can always trust you with mixing up the Smiths. So Did I? Chris, oh, there's too many Chris Smiths, Lynn man. and Chris Green. We're, we're going to mess up the Brooks as well. Uh, also the Shamars, sorry, Shamar Joseph and Shamar Brooks. That's going to happen. I think I've already yeah. done it once. <laughs> Graham Smith, the bigger, the bigger, angry one. Steve Smith. I don't think you could take a Steve Smith sledge seriously, could you? <laughs> like I just maybe you can. Maybe he's really good, but I haven't really heard anything. Um, and then you're probably going to have to go. I'm going to go Dennis Lilly. Mm. That's the obvious one I was thinking of. When I picked, yeah. picked Mick Johnson, I thought you'd pick Lily. It, 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 I think Doug Walters, Ian Chappell, even Greg Chappell a little bit, certainly Ian Chappell, Doug Walters, um, Rod Marsh, kind of all blend into one because they were kind of all sledging in one go. Um, and you could probably say that with some of, you know, some of the more, you know, Michael Slater, Matt Hayden sledges mm. that, that would come years later. Whereas I think Dennis Lilly kind of stood out and there was a bit of fun in his sledging. There was a bit of angry fast bowler in his sledging. You know, there was, there was good times. There, there was, you know, occasionally they went too far. Um, obviously the whole job of me and dad, uh, Dennis mm. Lilly one is, is quite clearly going too far. But I think that Dennis Lilly, if, I think if you think about sledging before Steve Waugh um, and certainly modern cricketers, I think Dennis Lilly is kind of the player that instantly comes to mind as the person who is, you know, and if you watch highlights, it is incredible how often he will bowl a ball and go down and say something. And if you watch like Larwood, right, or, or uh, Wes Hall, there's just not as much conversation. Like even if it's not sledging, like Dennis Lilly was just in a constant conversation with the batters. Um, and we saw we saw elements of that with modern fast bowls, but I don't know if we've seen anyone who was just more talking um, to everyone out there than, than Dennis Lilly was. You know, there's uh, lots of different, you know, famous um, occurrences of him sledging and everything else. But I certainly think he has to be on this list. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, so I've been told uh, yeah. by my... Yeah, go for it. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, um, I saw one where apparently he used to tell batters, um, I know why you've been batting badly. You've got shit at the end of your bat. And then yes, the batters would was... turn the bat over and then say wrong end. <laughs> Which, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's 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 clever, right? It's I've clever, heard. but one thing I would say is he did say that same joke to about 150 batters. <laughs> so it is a little bit like when your dad comes up with one good joke and he's mm -hmm. like, you know, like you 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 um you drop an egg and he goes, ah, the yolk's on you, right? And you just, <laughs> oh, that's quite funny when you're four. When he's still saying okay. it when you're 25, you're just like, okay. And I do think there was an element of that with Dennis. But yeah. to be, as I said, I, 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 you know, that was, it was obviously his whole thing was talking to the batters. So there is a, there's a, comp there. That is what he is trying to do. He's trying to get a reaction. He's trying to get them out of their bubble, right? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, my uncles who obviously lived, uh, oh, well, they obviously lived, but they were avid cricket watchers at the time when Lily was applying his trade. They tell me that he was the king of sledging. So that's why I did have yeah. him on his, on my list. It's just that I haven't witnessed it uh, in the flesh. So I didn't want to pick him. But uh, according to them, he would have a different sort of sledge for every batter. So I don't know how much they know, but it seems like, you know, he also has. Uh, well, as I said, I think, 
I think it was a constant conversation, but I mm. think it would probably mostly start with the you've got shit on the other end of your bat kind of thing. Or I think he had like four or five, th this is what I've heard from players who played against mm. him, that he had four or five phrases, mm. right? And then once he got in, he would then, you know, have a go at you. But he was more than happy just to yell and swear at people as well. Mm. Like it wasn't all, it wasn't all witty <laughs> repartee. I, I would pretty much believe it if he would be the sort of guy who would prepare, you know, how am I going to get into this person's head prior to the game? And it would be a pro part of his uh, preparation process. I, I can totally see that. Also had that big fuck off Australian mustache, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, he, you know, he, <laughs> he was untouchable in Australia. So he was going to do what he was going to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. My next pick, uh, you actually mentioned his name prior. He's not an Australian, but I think uh, he's probably one of the biggest sledges to come out of the subcontinent. Javed Niyadad. Constant yeah. mind games with Javed. If you listen to stories of Indian cricketers, you know, of how Javed used to operate whilst he was batting. Again, uh, even might have done a little bit when the other team was batting and he was fielding. But when he was batting, he would be the one who would be having a constant conversation with the bowlers. Particularly the spinners. I mean, also had like a bit of a lisp, which makes all of his sledges funnier. Especially if you know you know uh, Urdu or Hindi. So uh, Sunil Gavaskar and the like. Can you the... lisp in her in Urdu for me so I can understand how a <laughs> lisp in Urdu would sound? Is it possible? Yeah, so, can you do that? Is... So uh, this there's this one. Uh, I think it was uh, Dilip Doshi or one of those Indian spinners that you know we've all forgotten about. He kept asking him for his room number, and that sounded as loom number. You know, like the R was an L. <laughs> loom number. <laughs> So it just makes everything funnier. And Javed, like, he was a character. He was feisty. He is known as one of those uh, evil geniuses in cricket. And everyone also kind of respects him for that. Like, they never say that with a negative connotation. And, and of course, there's the whole bat swing at Lily and the whole truck driver or bus conductor thing he said to Merv Hughes, which kind of, you know, uh, bit him back because he, he got out. And I think uh, Merv Hughes said, uh, tickets, please, or something like that. That's how Correct. the story goes. Uh, but yeah. Just someone who was uh, very, very villainous like that and actually yeah. really wanted to get under the skins of the opposition. Like that was his tactic. And, you know, cricketers of that era say that it did work to a certain extent. Yeah, so there's another cricketer that was very similar to me and Deb, which was Arthur Morris, who played for Australia. Mm -hmm. And Arthur Morris, if there was a young fast bowler, he would bet them that they couldn't hit the stumps when he was mm -hmm. batting. So, of course, they would just bowl faster and fuller at the stump and he would just be flicking the ball off onto the leg side and scoring quite easily from them, right? Like, so, and I, and so that, that has history in cricket, but I think me and Dad took it to another level. I mean, the way he thought about cricket was, you know, I, I still don't think he gets the full respect he deserves for how much he changed the game just by being himself um, <laughs> and, and being, you know, a little bit nuts. And um, does the Kieran Moray jumping up and down in the oh, air? Yeah. I mean, it's not sledging, is it? But it's kind of all from the same... <laughs> You know, it's like, Yo. so Darren Goff, Darren Goff pretending to be a ghost for Shane Watson. I'm not sure if that makes Goffy a great sledger, but it's certainly, mm. it's visual sledging. Uh, there was this time where every time the bowler would like bowl into his pads, he'd bark. He'd go like, woof, woof. And the opposition was just like, <laughs> stump. Like they were like, what is going on? And then apparently it was like, oh, you know, make me play. Why are you like sending it to the dogs or something like that? something along those lines but it was just really uh comical it, it was unique in a weird way it wasn't like your average yeah. swearing at your mom or your partner or one of those sort of sledges it was just very very creative <laughs> yeah he he was very high up on my list as well all right estelle two picks okay so i'm going i'll go with an australian um michael clark i think best remembered for the uh, get ready for a broken, broken arm to Anderson, hmm. but also another guy who was constantly in the face of opposition, right? Um, and sometimes when, the, when, when it's not a fast bowler, you don't seem to notice it much. But I think Clark was the type of player who even with between overs, when he's walking past players, there was a bit of chat going on. Um, and he, he kind of inherited that whole Steve War, that era of you know, really, really going hard at players and the, the whole mental disintegration thing. So, Yeah, but the thing is, he's Michael Clark. Like, I never got that. Like, if Michael Clark said me, I would laugh. I would honestly <laughs> laugh in his face if he said me. His nickname because... was Pop. 
<laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, look, look at look at the other guy, look at the other Australians we have on this list so far. So mm. Steve Waugh, you'd be like, would you laugh at Steve Waugh if he said something? Probably not. Shane Warren, you probably wouldn't laugh just because um you, it's Shane Warren and you think he'll embarrass you later. And then Lily and Mitchell Johnson can knock your head off. What's <laughs> Michael Clark gotta do? Play an attractive um square drive? I know like, you, right? I don't, yeah, it's so weird. Like, and I played against guys like Michael. Like that kind of Michael Clark sledging is really common in Australia. Well, you're looking at the guy going, "Mate, if we get to the car park, you're going to get beaten up." Like, wh- who do you think you are? You, you know, it's such a ridiculous thing to do. Whereas, you know, look at Alan Border. Like, if Alan Border was sledging you, it's probably because he did want mm. to fight you, right? <laughs> like, like there's a there's an absolute reason there. I never got it with Michael Clark, and you, but you're right. He went on and on with people, and you're like, "Come on, settle down, son." Like, you know. <laughs> I, you know, just not a guy. Like, I think if Michael Clark sledged in club cricket, I think he would have been beaten mm. up. Like, the only thing he could, you know, <laughs> he, his big advantage was it was international cricket and it wasn't going to go anywhere. And he had, like, Mitch Johnson or Mitchell Stark or whoever else he had, you know, bowling fast for him at the other end, right? Like, come on, mate. <laughs> He's one of those yeah, annoying I, I, characters, isn't he? Mm. I remember the sledge, but I don't know. I've never looked at Clark as this ultimate sledger for some reason. I mean, the sounds right. He was very yeah. verbal. I mean, it's not, it's, you know, he's not seen as an ultimate sledger because, like, you know, he, he looks like he, he shouldn't be sledging. <laughs> <laughs> like, Graham Smith has a face for sledging, right? Mm-hmm. That, that, you know, that there's there's a, a thing when, if Graham Smith says something to you, you're going to take notice of it, right? Um, if Michael Clark says, I'm, I would just, I don't know, maybe, maybe I spent too long playing cricket in, in, in club cricket in Australia, but I just, there's no way I wouldn't have laughed if someone like Michael Clark had said something to me. <laughs> like, well, what, Smith, you want me to get ready for a broken Smith, arm? Go back to slip, little man. <laughs> Smith's nickname was uh, Biff, so Biff definitely overpowers Pop. Exactly. I, I would like to yeah. think. <laughs> anyway, so you still have one more pick to redeem yourself. Yeah, one more. <laughs> I, I'll stand by my pick. I mean, I think he's really annoying. He's like a Joe Root of sledges, right? I mean, Joe Root could be pretty annoying as well. So I'll stick by that, no problem. Uh, number mm. four as well, another Australian. So Merv Hughes, you Beram mentioned one of mm. the one of the funnier ones, with the tickets, tickets, please, against Javid Meandad. Mm. I just thought he was a... Obviously, you haven't watched him live, but um, very much a the big characters in one of the big characters in cricket, right? Uh, especially during that era, just the moustache and the aggression he showed. But he also had a few things to say to the batters and few weird things he would do. He used to do something on the pitch, didn't he? Did he? Um, I can't remember. I mean, he was just, Again, a bit like Dennis Lee, he was just talking all the time. Like, it was so much part of who Merv Hughes was. And the difference was that, with all due respect to Merv Hughes, he was a good bowler, but he wasn't, like, a great <laughs> bowler. Like, and, and I think I think with him, and, you know, I've seen, I've seen this in Australian cricket before. There's a few guys like this in Australian cricket. David Seiko, who went on to be England's and Australia's bowling mm. coach, very similar to Merv Hughes, where it's almost like they knew they weren't top-level bowlers, and so they just had to work out a way to get under everyone's skin at all time. Um, although, you know, famously, I think Merv Hughes also annoyed his teammates, so it might have just been his his basic personality. Uh, but he was – but, uh, yeah, just constantly talking and saying absolute rubbish. I think in he was hoping they would clap back. Right, and so it be- could become a thing. But there's plenty of stories of him sledging the West Indies and just getting absolutely annihilated by by their batters <laughs> as well. So um, yeah, there's the, I, I think the famous ones are probably Javed Mean Dad and Mike Atherton. Um, you know, I, I, those are the ones that I you know kind of remember with Murph Hughes. But I, I, he made a comeback when he was playing for Canberra. Right. So like they brought in the seventh professional team to Australian cricket in Canberra, and he went and played for them and. It'd be fair to say he wasn't quite in uh, peak athletic shape and he could barely get through the crease. Like his knees were gone and he was still just barking at, at, at <laughs> players over and over again. Like it was just always, and it was really a big part of, of who he was. And, you know, I, I don't know him particularly well, but like I've been in quite often I'll be in the same hotel as him. Right. You know, cause he does a lot of tour groups and like someone will have a go at him and he just like go straight back into fast mold, bowler mode and just start sledging this person 
over breakfast, like there's yogurt around, right? And like, you know, some, you know, someone's warming up their milk and there's toast being cooked and Merv Hughes is just going at someone who's had a go at him. So I think it's just part of who he is, which I, I don't think, I don't think that's the case for every single other player on this list. Whereas I think for Merv Hughes, it was like, it was almost his personality was through sledging. I think he says yeah, a lot on Twitter more glorious as well. mustache. <laughs> oh yeah, that he does. He got into a fight with who was it? P.S. Morgan was it? <laughs> it might have been. There's, there's I, a great story of him. There's a great story of him, and this isn't even that long ago of storming into the Oval press box um, because someone had written something about him and like you know screaming. And I don't if, no, if you. Neither of you have probably been in the Oval Press spot, but it's not very big. It's not that much bigger than my office, right? And it's also, it's like weirdly dark and quiet. So like Merv Hughes, like bounding in there made such a huge impact. So yeah, like it, he's definitely that dude. I mean, the mustache did some sledging on its own, I assume. Estelle has picked him twice now on, on Quick Picks. She was uh, her first pick in the facial hair one as well. So yeah. just want to point that out. Also, Graham Smith has made it to a few lists now, surprisingly, hasn't he? I think Graham Smith deserves to be on a few lists. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, my next pick is uh, another Australian, but not in the same sort of mold that you'd expect. Maybe some of you see this as a hipster or rogue pick as well. I'm going to go with Tim Payne because this is <laughs> post Sandpaper Gate. Australia are trying to rebrand. They're not sure how they're supposed to sledge. And Tim Payne brings in that jokey flavor to all of it, you know, especially with the Indian team, uh, how he was talking about IPL contracts and teams. Uh, babysitting. Uh, who was it? Yeah, babysitting. And then there was this one player who he kept asking, like, how do you like Virat as a bloke? I, I know he's a good cricketer and all, but you can't possibly like him as a bloke. And uh, telling Ashwin that, you know, we'll see you at the Gabba, stuff like that. It was very tongue in cheek, even though you could say it's unsuccessful sledging because India beat Australia. It was just something different, not very, you know, mainstream Australian-like and it was lighter and it was just very like, out of all the sledges that I witnessed in my life, those were the ones I would look forward to when I'd replay the video over and over again because Tim Payne, for all that he eventually became famous for, I think that was just hilarious. Some of the most hilarious sledges I've heard in my life and I don't know, I mean, if this, if someone can share a video underneath in the comment section, I I'd love to see it again. <laughs> see, so for me, none of that was all that surprising. That's a very normal mm -hmm. way of Australian sledging of, mm -hmm. especially pretend, uh, the whole thing of like, uh, you know, um, your captain's not a good bloke. Um, you, you know, you don't really like him <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I actually th think that's normal Australian sledging. The difference is that Payne was very aware that the microphones were on, mm -hmm. right? And that is a little bit different than what we saw in the 80s and 90s, where I think you would have got similar sledges to Tim Payne, but with 17 extra swear words in. Mm. And then when that didn't work, you would have heard the threats and everything else. So I actually think Tim, that, that for me is I grew up with that. And it's also very similar to what Kumar Sankikara would do, right? Like, mm. you know, to go yeah. back to it. And, you know, we, we could put Ian Healy on this list, Matthew Wade on this list, Brad Haddon on this list. Like, if you go through, Australian wicket keepers are very well known for just mm. talking to you. You know, like Alex Carey, it's kind of famously quiet because it's just not a thing that Australian wicket keepers generally are. <laughs> um, they're just constantly talking to you. And and again, it goes back to the Dennis Lilly thing of, that we were talking about before of trying to get you into your bubble, right? Of, mm. of just trying to get you off your game a little bit and make you stop thinking about it. And and that's what Tim Payne was going to do. But it, it's, def it's definitely sledging. And like, I, I probably wouldn't have had him on this list only because I'm not even sure I could slip in Ian Healy. And I think Ian Healy probably mm. deserves... Um, you know, Ian Healy's going to, if I don't put Ian Healy on, it'll probably be quite unlucky uh, for him not to make it. But, um, but Tim Payne is a high level sledger. I don't think anyone can argue about that. <laughs> very, very cheeky, even though the inviting Ashwin to the Gabba thing backfired big time. But uh, yeah. I, I really enjoyed that cheekiness. And I'm not sure if he'll make it to the list or not, but that was something Moin Khan also did really well. Mm. But of course, this list needs to be dominated by the Aussies. I, I mean, I cannot see it any other way. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with someone else who is <coughs> not Australian because I think we got most of the big Australians um, other than perhaps Healy and McGrath, which you know we still have time to slip in. But Andre Nell, mm, I had him. I just thought he would survive <laughs> for my for fifth pick, but he didn't clearly. <laughs> I mean, so you guys know about Gunter, right? From Friends, no. Andre Nell had, <laughs> when he went on the field, wasn't Andre Nell. In his head, he was Gunter. Oh, I he do had not know an, He had an alternative personality that he would wow. go onto the field with. And, and because 
I mean, to be honest, people, I know people have have known him who said actually he was acting the same way on the field he does off the field. But (laughs) in his mind, uh, Gunter was like his, like, his performance art, right? Uh, You know, Mm -hmm. uh, when he went out on the field, he became this other character. It's worth going, if you Google it, there's some great early YouTube highlights of Andre now just being crazy, like acting and, (laughs) you know, screaming. And obviously the whole thing with Shreesanth and everything Mm -hmm. else. Like Mm -hmm. he was, I I would say, I think him and Merv Hughes are probably the two who used it entirely to build like a bowling style around mm-hmm. right so i'm not saying that me and dad and steve war and, and some of the others didn't have you know didn't use it right but i think they used it as a separate tool so i think if you look at merv hughes and you look at entree Nell, they were literally like you could say right arm sledger right like you don't even need right arm fast right arm speed. no no just right arm sledger that's what that's what i, I use my right arm in a sledge right <laughs> it was such a part of his and you know and, and i don't well, the fact that you guys didn't know about Gunter sort of suggests hmm. that I think there's a few opposition players who didn't realize it was just Andre Nell trying to be Andre Nell. And that's that almost John McEnroe level, right? Where hmm. you have to be involved in, in, in every single moment of it. Like, the, the, you know, you, you have to build this, almost this character to make it work for you because it's so bizarre and over the top. So um, I, I, I think for me, he definitely has to be on this list. I'm I'm glad that I didn't pick him because I didn't know the Gunter story, right? So you had to tell it. And yeah, I mean, he was synonymous with sledging. That was his entire personality. And from what I'm told, and it makes complete sense now with the alt personality thing, is that he was the softest guy off the field. The nicest bloke, which you really cannot believe. You'd be hard-pressed to believe that with Andre Nell because you'd remember him more for his antics than his bowling. <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely. Um, so fifth, this is my last pick, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um I wanted to pick Mike Atherton because there is a great story about Mike Atherton that Bumble told me for my book, which is, which is Ath is a bit like Steve Waugh and me and dad really liked the play, uh, people talking back to him, really liked being, you know, involved in that sort of stuff. And one day he decided to pick a fight with someone and it was a Pakistani fielder who was at Silly Point. He said, you've been doing that all day. Stop doing that, blah, blah, blah. And, and the 12th man went, I sorry, and the fielder went, I'm the 12th man. I just came on the field. Right? <laughs> and it just, it's proper, like Athers again. And, you know, there are stories about Athers and Glenn McGrath and Athers and, and Merv Hughes, you know. So I think Athers is a really under the radar sledger because he wasn't loud and yelly and, and, and everything mm. else. But he certainly said things that got to people's head. But I can't have him over this other person because I do think that this other person is a major reason why sledging ends up becoming such a a part of Australian cricket. And I know some of it is just the way that Australian society is, but I think Warwick Armstrong has to be uh, next level because his ability to talk to players at a time where like we, I don't think really, I, if you go back, I'm pretty sure sledging um, that there is, there's mentions of sledging quite early on, in, uh, maybe early to 1800s, not the word sledging, but you know, the idea of it. But in, in English cricket, it was a little bit more, class-based and a little bit more quippy right whereas i think if you if the, the sledging that we now think about you know the psychological sledging and you know and all that sort of stuff that really comes out of uh warwick armstrong the big ship oh. who as i've said before is uh perhaps the the person who makes australian cricket become australian cricket or at least reputationally becomes that sort of person um and you know the the, the stories of him talking to everyone and he would he would clap back at the crowd um you know he would take a newspaper out if a player was batting too boring right like you know um he would do anything he could to try and get into the minds of other people and annoy everyone around him uh, you know so i definitely think that uh, warwick armstrong has to be on this list whereas i don't think really pre-1970s sledging really exists the way that we look at it I do think it was, you know, there were friendly stuff and there was there was chirping and there were conversations. So I think Warwick Armstrong really is the beginning of that sort of stuff. And then from from the Australian team in the 70s through to now. And it's funny because Ian Chappell doesn't like the fact that his team kind of starts it and and everything else. But realistically, you know, that that is when sledging begins. But I think Warwick Armstrong, if you look at the real history of it, was definitely saying things to people on the field and was saying them on purpose and repeatedly just to get in people's heads. 
Hmm. I mean, I almost expected it at this point. You're not surprising anyone with your old school yeah. <laughs> pick. Uh, but you picked him uh, in the captaincy one as well, didn't you? Uh, for the yeah. same reason. So, Warwick Armstrong has made it to Crick Picks twice. Who would have thought, right? Great. Yeah, great I mean, story it, over there. It, if, if you've heard me talk about him on these, it's worth... Um, <laughs> Gideon Haig wrote a book about Warwick Armstrong. It is mm. worth going back. He's an <laughs> incredible figure um, who... Uh, I you know, It's a real shame that he played before cameras and everything else because I mm. could only imagine the, how much he would annoy um, opposition uh, fans in this, in this modern world. Mm. Fair enough. All right, my last pick. Now, I have a really solid list thus far. I actually feel like I can win this. So <laughs> I love how you're about to ruin it. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I'm tempted to ruin it, right? I wanted to go for one of Broad and Anderson. But I want to win this now, right? So I'm going to go Glenn McGrath. Because oh, that's okay. the obvious one. And uh, again, much like Mitchell Johnson, some of the times the stuff that came out of Glenn McGrath's mouth was really, really vile. The Sarwan story kind of, you know, came back to haunt great. him. Yeah. And I mean, mm. in Sarwan's defense, he didn't know the whole backstory. But McGraw kind of set himself up for that. And it was a constant thing with him. He's even owned up to it, I think, later that he had these anger management issues on the field. And he was just someone who, again, was just always in your ear. And he was like, mm. really like pissy looking as well. Like McGraw, it, you look at his face and you could tell that he's saying something really obnoxious right now. So just to win this episode, I've gone for McGrath because I don't think anyone can compete with my five sledges. I, that, I mean, that's a solid around. pick, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, uh, you'll still manage to lose it somehow. But um, <laughs> I, I, I think it's a solid pick. He's certainly synonymous with with, with yeah. sledging and everything else. And um, I always thought he just looked angry, like. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? They, he just looked constantly like just upset at things. And so I wonder how much was like really cool sledging and how much was, you can't do that. I'm Glenn McGraw, um, mm. which did seem to be also a part of it as well. But uh, fair play. I, I think he has to be on the list. Yeah, had to. Absolutely. All right, Estelle, final pick for you or is it final two picks? Final one. Oh, it's final pick. Number five. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so I know there have been a lot of Australians and Rightly so, right? But also South Africa has had a few of their own as well. So I'm going with another wicketkeeper, mm -hmm. Mark Boucher. Um, another Ooh. guy, I mean, yeah, it's expected for wicketkeepers to have a lot to say. Um, but he was another one who used to, I feel like, get in the heads of batters. There is one video, if I'm not mistaken, it was Taibu, who he kept talking about his yeah. average and, you know, just talking there wasn't much else going mm. on but just always in his ear uh, and there were some instances in Colombo as well I think that that was one of the most fiery test matches I think in the year 2000 if I'm not mistaken where the two teams really had a go at each other Sri Lanka and South Africa um, and he was the one who kind of started it all off by uh, I believe making fun of Mahela Jayavadana because he got hit in his you know, private parts. Um, <laughs> so he he was that kind of guy, right? Who who always had something to say. So I think he, he's a good one to round up the 15. Yeah, I had Boucher on my list for sure. I just didn't know where to put him, honestly. Yeah, it's hard. So I found it really hard with wicket keepers because mm. wicket keepers by, in general just never shut up, right? Like Dick Weller is famous for just mm -hmm. never shutting up, mm. right? Yeah. And and again, is it, sometimes I'm not even sure if that is sledging or if it's just that they get bored out there and they want to talk. So um, <laughs> it, it's, yeah, I mean, I think Boucher was quite, quite well known for speaking um, and certainly got himself in trouble with some of the comments he said mm -hmm. on the field. There's a yep. there's a comment that uh, Mark Butcher has talked about before on the field um, that you know he didn't go down particularly well. Um, so uh, I I think you'd he's certainly a sledger. There's absolutely of, of no doubt there. It, I don't think there's any surprise that the majority of these players are Australian and South African either. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, so in South Africa they call it chirping, don't they, rather than sledging? I think they oh, they, they refer. I, I think traditionally it's probably maybe changed a little bit more now, but, um, yeah, it's always, I think it's always a fairly famous, um, uh, all right, you know, those are the two places that, that like to chat. Right. And, and they're going to be involved in this more than anywhere else. The, like the West Indians, for instance, weren't particularly known for being all that verbal. They, they spoke a lot mm -hmm. off the field. Um, but I, you know, a lot of the West Indian players weren't that known for, for, for sledging all that much at mm -hmm. all. If you, if you go back. 
Yeah, yeah, actually, I've been told this many a times that that West Indian team, they wouldn't sledge. And uh, that West Indian team also had a great rivalry with Pakistan. So I hear all sorts of anecdotes. And they just had so much respect in Pakistan. Like, they would get standing ovations and all of that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy how they didn't sledge at all. But, um, yeah, Boucher is interesting, right? Because he's also said some other stuff that came uh, out yeah. later. He said a lot of things that, yeah. <laughs> that mean he probably shouldn't have kept his job for as long as yeah. he did. Um, but it's interesting. We started with, like, most iconic sledges, but now we've ended up with a list of people who, who really shouldn't have said what they said. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I mean, I'm an expert in sledging on a couple of different ways. A, I'm pretty sure I've done more sledging than you two have in your life. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, you know, being from the Australian culture, it is part of the cricket. It is mm -hmm. very different. It's it's seen as another skill, right? And, and not everyone has it. Not everyone's good at it, but it is seen as another skill. Um, so th so that's that's one thing that's worth remembering. Also, as I've talked about before, once wrote sledges for Jack Shantry when he was bowling to Eddie Cowan, uh, which is one of the you know the prouder moments of my career to actually write sledges that were used in a professional cricket game mm -hmm. against a friend. Um, uh, so that was fun. But but yeah, I do come from that background. And so like when you talk about the Tim Payne thing, I mm -hmm. kind of understand that on a different level than you do, mm -hmm. and I understand what is really happening and why that has come from and and everything else. And you know most sledging generally, if it's not working, ends up in abuse, right? Mm -hmm. Some sledging starts as abuse, right? Yeah. Right, But most sledging, if it's not working, kind of ends up in, in abuse. Um, and that's kind of been the, 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 the thing that I've seen more often than not. And also, a lot of it is just bullying and nonsense mm. and, and everything else. And so, you know, most of the best sledges, right, if you have a look at all those books that have all those quotes about best sledges, it's actually the comeback that's funnier than the sledging mm -hmm. usually the sledging is just a stupid line right like yeah. you know tickets tickets please right by merv hughes is probably better than any sledge he came up with on his own right <laughs> you know uh when in rome my old boy by by atherton right um you know or edo brand is saying uh, your wife feeds me biscuits after i sleep with her right <laughs> like all those lines come from being abused right yeah. so realistically you know and, and does it play a part of course and and you know we we did the po podcast with rafi recently you know he's written a book about the history of trash talking and a lot of people don't actually trash talk to get in the opposition player's mind it's actually just to get their own mind ticking over hmm. right they need the stakes hmm. to be ri you know to be risen sometimes or they need an enemy to vanquish hmm. right and all those sorts of things so hmm. it really is a fascinating um a, you know a, a fascinating part of our sport and our sport is kind of made to do this um yeah. and with you know with the advent of stump mics maybe we can hear some more things accidentally occasionally that slip through um mm -hmm. but gen I i'll be honest generally most legend absolutely boring terrible <laughs> and there's no point actually repeating it at all yeah it, it's funny you bring up the comeback thing because why i had Stuart broad in over there of, obviously like broad and anderson both of those guys they're known to be sledges as well they, they do have yeah. a word or two with the batters every single time or, or most batters especially the, the aussies yeah. but it's that comeback that he came up with against mitch johnson was it that uh, mitch johnson said that uh, broady if i have slept with your sister does that make us related or something like that and broady said that no, Mitch, that makes us ev even. That That's the sledge that he said it on a podcast, I, I believe. So, uh, yeah, uh, in terms of notable absentees from this list, I would say Broad and Anderson. Um, maybe Flintoff? So, uh, yeah, I mean, Flintoff's famous for Mind the Windows. Mm. I know yeah. Flintoff's mm. certainly another one who had a lot to say. I don't know if everything was always sledgy. And I think mm. the Mind the Windows one probably gets more play because Tino went out. But it's mm. like, if you say a tail end is going to do something stupid, you're probably going to be right anyway. Um, but yeah, certainly Flintoff had had some conversations uh, on the field. I think that's that's very very fair. Um, I, I mean, I don't know if Flintoff's known as like a he's known more of as a character than he is mm. specifically as a sledger. I think would be fair to say. Yeah, I, I think he was more jokey. There's that yeah. Dwayne Bravo one as well, in which he was like, "You're not going to be around after." however many test matches. I, I remember there was something of the sort where he he, he said something like that. Um, yeah, apart from those three Englishmen, I had some Pakistanis in which I, I knew were never going to make it because there's so many Aussies. Uh, Shoaib Akhtar was there. <laughs> Moin Khan was there. Uh, just that Wahab Riyaz reaction in that 2015 quarterfinal. I had that over there. And uh, Manas. Yeah, I, I weirdly had Manas in there. <laughs> Again, if Manas said something to you, you'd be like, okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And I, I find it hard to count. believe. 
Sawan doesn't count because he wasn't known as a sledge sledge, right? Yeah, I, I, as I said, I think again that's just someone probably mm. talking back, right, rather than yeah. than than anything else. I, you know, it, it's a it's a tough one um, how you uh, how you think about that. But yeah, for sure, I, I think that's very fair to 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 think about. Estelle, who did you have that didn't make it? Yeah, actually, I had I had very similar to Michael Clark. I had Joe Root because he's one of those annoying. annoying guys who who's always after you uh, but everyone else kind of got in the list fair enough okay yeah i think uh, i think most of mine were there as well do you want me to go through the list yes let's do it oh i've now lost it <laughs> you were oh first so you can start with your set ah uh, here it is here it is <laughs> um i had steve war graham smith dennis lee andre nell work armstrong Bayram had Shane Warne, Mitch Johnson, Javed Mean, that Tim Payne, Glenn McGrath, and Estelle had Kumar Sangakkara, Virat Kohli, Michael Clark, Merv Hughes, and oh, what was your last one again? Mark Boucher. Oh, Mark yeah. Boucher, of course. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to type. So, how in. many? How many Australians is that? Oh, in total. Um, <laughs> so, what have I got? I've got three Australians. You've got four Australians, Bayram, mm-hmm. and. Um, I wrote Bark Boucher by the way I've just realized um <laughs> which for this episode is very out and uh so we've got 10 of the 15 mm. uh Australians and then we've got what f- two three South Africans oh no no so it must be 9 of the 15 I was got that mm. wrong um uh yeah and then we've got two three South Africans an Indian a Sri Lankan and a Pakistani mm. is that right and no one from England So I thought about putting WG Grace on as well for mm. his shenanigans but I don't know if he was necessarily known for mm. what we would now regard as legging. He certainly did, you know, there was certainly some trash talking on and off the field at times. I think he felt like he was too good to actually trash talk like how dare anyone even talk back to him. <laughs> oh, oh, he but, would just um, cheat. He wouldn't require the sledging, right? Didn't need didn't he probably would have had to pay <laughs> someone to write in better lines, right? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, those are our teams, guys. And uh, let us know in the comment section and wherever on Twitter or Instagram, wherever you see this uh, reel or video, who you think you uh, who you think deserves to win this one, and why you think it was me who smashed it? Because clearly I did. And uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's, okay. it's okay. This was this was a fun one. I'm I'm glad we did uh, sledging. <clears throat> All right oh, then. Fuck, uh, fuck you. You you're a terrible host, mate. I don't know why we hired you. <laughs> Well, in in that true spirit of sledging, uh, I think we should uh, call it quits for this uh, episode. And yeah, uh, stay tuned uh, or to Jared Kimber podcast. We'll be back with another episode of Prick Picks next week. That's all for this one. Goodbye. A lot of people complain that I'm not a former cricketer and so that I don't really know the game. Well, you know what they can't claim that I don't know desks. I've been using desks for years. I'm a collector of desks, old and new, and I'm sitting on a new one right now. I'm the Don Bradman of sitting at desks. So when I tell you that the E7 Pro next generation height adjustable desk from FlexiSpot is legit. This is like Michael Jordan talking to you about sneakers. This desk holds 160 kg. It is as stable as anything I've ever seen and it has under desk cable management. But really the main skill here is that this desk rises and falls at the push of a button and it moves super quick and it has so many settings that remember your favorite heights. It really does it all. And I could not recommend the E7 Pro from FlexiSpot anymore. Even though I am currently sitting on one of FlexiSpot's BS12 Pro multifunctional adjustable upgraded fabric ergonomic chairs. My butt and computer have never been happier than when using one of FlexiSpot's products. So get over to their page right now for big savings.